pretty good year for us. And now, I come to the moment we've all been waiting for. The ultimate winner of this year's Golden Scroll Award for the highest number of policies sold in the Northeast region is... Yes, for the second year running, it is William Rowlands. And as manager of the region, I'd like to say, well done, Bill. Thank you, Derek. And I also gather that congratulations are in order on the marriage front. As tomorrow you celebrate 20 years of blissful union with your lovely wife, Jane. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Goodness. Um, I really couldn't have won this award without the loyal support of my backup team. It's Derek and uh, my assistant, Maureen Duffy. And, of course, the loyal support of my wife, who's always stood behind me, never complained about the long and the late hours that I've had to work to get this one forward. Thank you. Well done, Bill. Oh, thank you, Derek. Afraid I've got to ask a big favour of your husband, Janie. Oh, yes. Had head office on the blower from London. They want to know how you do it, Bill. Sending up a couple of audit blokes after the bank holiday. Hoping you could prepare a presentation for them. You know, a few facts and figures. But it's our anniversary. Not till tomorrow, darling. Work first, play later. Well done, lad. <laughs> oh, Bill, what a shame. Not to worry. After tomorrow's party, we'll be on that boat for two days. Won't that be lovely? Lovely, darling. Don't wait on. Any chance of you being able to work late, Miss Tuffy? Well, yes, of course, Mr. Rowlands. Did you put some flowers inside? Of course I have. Bedroom full of white lilies. Thomas, lilies are for funerals. Well, I've been married for 20 years. Just because you can't maintain a relationship for more than 20 minutes doesn't give you the right to slag off decent folk who really mean it when they say, till death do them part. Listen, Bill and Jane Rowland have been dead for years. Oh, don't be so mean. Yeah, come on. He don't only bore for the world, Eleven. He's the old team and the first bleeding reserve. He's a very... very nice man. Very, very nice man. So do you think they'll spot it? It depends on whether they suspect it already. We may be able to fool Derek, but not the London lads. So what do we do? We don't panic. They're going to Rio. Mm. Perhaps we should give Ronnie Biggs a ring. God, you're a mad bastard. Come here. And if you just get you off me for a second, <laughs> I'll make sure our money goes as well. I'll also leave a message for our ever-loving boss. So when do we go? Sunday night. Good boy, I hate ties. Now listen, listen, how's this? Of all the marriages said to be made in heaven, this union between Bill and Jane is surely... The most boring event of the century. Just bite your bum, will you? What are you making a speech for anyway? Jane asked me. <laughs> you mean she asked you to make a speech to tell everyone how wonderful her marriage is? Sort of. That marriage is in trouble. No, it isn't. Listen, just be pleasant, behave yourself, and don't drink too much. No, I'll just sit in the corner with my pal Lively. Oh, God, why is he coming? Because Bill's sold him 400 insurance policies, that's why. <laughs> Mind you, it's going to be funny to see him all punched up, isn't it? Yeah, well, you just make sure he's had a wash and don't let him tell any stories or sing any songs. Listen, why don't we just stay here and have a nice little party of our own, eh? It'll do us good to see how solid citizens behave. Well, have they got something we ain't? No, Thomas. Not a thing. So why are we going, then? You have to see other people's grass to see how green your own is. Have you not got anything decent to wear? People will think I'm not bringing you up properly. Oh, shut up. You don't bring me up. You don't let me hang around here because I'm cheaper than a guard dog. But not quite as chairman. Anyhow, it's only a sodden wedding anniversary. 
some feeble-minded woman celebrating 20 years of slavery. I thought it was 20 years of mutual adoration or some such rubbish. Look, what are you doing? If we don't get there soon, we'll miss the drink. Well, she's there again. Who the hell is she? Probably someone from the social. They're always hanging around spying on innocent people. Well, she gives me the bleeding creeps. Slaver is going to drag me off the street and take me to some geezer's out of ring. Is that why you never got married then? Well, I never met the right woman. For all the women I ever met were female. Marriage to one of them is against all the rules of the grand order of holy rolling misogynists, of which I am the founder member. Give us a song. I've been a wild rover for many, many the year, and I spend all my money on whiskey and beer. No, come on then, Jane. What's the secret, eh? In, in one word, how do you maintain the perfect marriage? One word. Mm. Well, Sally, that word would have to be honesty. Honesty? Honesty. <laughs> Probably time for your little speech now. Oh, yes. Right. It did me that. Why? Well, uh, Ladies uh, and gentlemen, could we have a bit of hush, please? It's speech time. Cool. This should be really embarrassing. <laughs> Go for it, son. Make him have it. Go on, girl. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here we are in this lovely home, which which is so nice, isn't it? I would call it a shrine, really. More like a tomb, innit? Yes, a shrine to the happiness and fulfilment that Bill and Jane have achieved in the last... 200 years. 20 years of their marriage. Now, Bill, Bill, he's a wonderful man and a great um, insurance seller. And Jane, well, I have known Jane for many years now, and when it comes to supporting a local charity or running a jumble sale and generally doing her bit for people, well, Jane gives of herself unstintingly. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you all now to raise your glass... Oh, raise your glasses and join me in a toast to Bill and Jane, the perfect couple. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. God bless the bride and groom and all who sail in her. <laughs> You're angry with me, aren't you? What on earth gave you that idea? Well, first you push me down the steps, then you slam me fingers in the bleeding door. I've got a nose for these little subtleties. I know what's bugging you. Oh, yeah? What is it, then? Well, basically, it's you. You think you've missed out. Best friend Jane's got two kids, husband, house, a home full of marital bliss. And what you got, eh? A chequered past, you live on a barge, and a bloke who's about as permanent as an Italian government. Go on, go on. Yeah, you've seen the other man's grass now, haven't you? Suddenly you realise that yours may not be greener. 
Sally, you don't want all that suburban lawn mowing, car cleaning, mortgage paying stuff. Yeah, what do I want then? Exactly what you got. What, you mean all this deep in debt, chronic insecurity, totally without a future type of existence, is that right? Well, you don't have to paint quite such a rosy picture. Oi. Oi, you're coming, coming. We are OK. All right, I may not be perfect, but you are, and that makes up for it. Bloody killer you are. I'm working on it. <laughs> what? What's up? Just looking at you. Seeing what I got. Oh, yeah. Anyway. All right, is it? Yeah. Not bad. You're gonna buy, then? Yes. Yes, I'll... I'll have this one. Have it scrubbed and sent to my tent. I've forgotten it was Saturday. Bloody nice. Have enough heavy metal in me. You're a revolting, disgusting, stinking pisshead. <laughs> you know what you need in your life? Yeah, a set of unlosable screwdrivers. A woman. Same thing. <laughs> what do you mean, a woman? A really strong one who'd kick you into shape. Sure would have me. There must be somebody somewhere with a strong stomach and no sense of smell. But I don't like women. Rubbish. Just chicken. Come here. What do you see? Uh, a cross between uh, William Butler Yeats and... Uh, Clint Eastwood. Look again. Ah! Oh, God's sake, I don't look that bad. What do you want? What is this? Is that weirdo woman? I'm going to find her this time. Jagger and Jerry all have arrived. Uh, listen, I'm sorry if I went a bit over the top of your party last night. Oh, no, not at all. You're very amusing. Jane always likes to have you and Sally around. Makes her friends think we've got a sort of bohemian, arty side to our life. We haven't, of course, but it's a nice idea. Now, that's your locker. You know what to do with that. Now, the most important thing to remember about these old girls is the answering time on the tiller. It's not a car, you see. You've got to give it time. Who does your marine insurance? Have a day off. You're on holiday, aren't you? Sorry, have it. You know what they say, if it moves, insure it. <laughs> How about life insurance? Oh, I'm not into long-term commitments. OK with Sally, is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just live together on a week-to-week -week basis. See, we've knocked about. We know a bit about life. See, we've got this inner confidence in ourselves that we don't feel we need to prop it up with a wedding certificate. You mean you're scared out your pants? Yeah. <laughs> there you go, ladies. Hey! Provisions. Yeah. Yeah, right. right, right, don't fall in, love. They're going to be handy on a boat, mate. Here you go. Here you go. Come. Bye. 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 Bye
nice time. Take care. Yeah, remember that old tiller, all right? Yeah, uh, boy. Oh, dear, oh, Lord, what a couple of ravers, eh? That's what marriage does to you. They seem very happy, Thomas. <laughs> Don't knock it till you've tried it. Listen, what was all this stuff about I'll see you tomorrow? Oh, well, they're going to moor up by Woodhall. So, you can play golf with Bill, and I can find out about perfect marriages. I can't play golf. Well, fake it. You fake everything else. Sal! Sally! Yeah? What is it? It's that woman. The mystery woman. I've got a cornered in Jeff's calf. So who is she? I don't know yet. I want you to come with me. Oh, why? Oh, please, Sal. She's really creepy. There's something funny about her. Oh, go on. You've got to come. Oh, all right. Thomas! I've got to go and see a mystery woman. They're all a bloody mystery. Do you? But well, there she is. She's done it again. She's bloody disappeared. <sighs> yeah, well, she's not here now. Come on. Hey. Go on. Go on, Pippa. I want to know what you want. Pippa? Yeah, that's me. Who are you? My name's Brenda Lynch. I'm your mother. How do I know you, me mother? I mean, you just could be some kind of weirdo. She means, do you have any proof? The child, patient index 4782, was admitted to the Martyr Hospital, Liverpool, on the 5th of July, 1970. She had been abandoned in a nearby phone box. Um, have you got anything else at all? Fostered out to David and Laura Saunders, given the name Saunders, call Pippa. After a bleeding phone box, Pips, get it? Were they nice to you? Nicer than you. Didn't dump me in a bloody phone box, anyhow. Morning, all. How's everybody then? Oh, that good, huh? <laughs> now, who's this lovely lady? Bugger off. Ah, one of the Yorkshire bugger offs, is it? She says she's my mother. Uh, I think we ought to be going, don't you? Oh, you can't leave. Go on. <sighs> Listen, Pippa, this isn't my business. I can't be here. This is something you've got to work out with your mum here. OK? Suppose. It's nice to meet you, Brenda. Good luck. Derek Sheen. Oh, hello. You what? A snug on the computer at our end? Oh, come on. It's a bloody bank holiday. OK. I'll go in in the morning. Bloody southerners. So what else can I tell you? So you had this baby, right, and you dumped it? What, were you a junkie or something? Acid freak? <laughs> no. I was just very young. Me dad came over to get work and then just sort of 
disappeared, left me on my own. Well, what about your mum? She died back home. Hang on a minute, where is this home? Galway. Oh, God, don't tell me I'm Irish. Half Irish. Well, what about the other half? What's my dad? Don't tell me you don't know. Please, don't attack me. Passing Spanish sailor, was he? Or were you had by the young lord of the bleeding manor and left to hide your shame? I wouldn't expect you were a total innocent crying no, no, all the way to the cot, eh? Is that how it was, eh, is it? <laughs> I'm sorry. a very nice person. Yeah. Irish, of course. Of course, cool, sir. Quiet and gentle, and hardly like a woman at all. Well, imagine Pippa having a mum, can you? I thought she just fell off the back of a lorry. <laughs> right. What's this? Golf clubs? You asked me for golf clubs. Well, they're golf clubs. Just like the ones Nick Dildo uses. Faldo, lively. It's Nick Faldo. What? Jesus Christ. Very nice. I feel quite at home here. You just behave yourself, you. What? You know what I mean. <laughs> Excuse me, Cocker. Um, she's come for the tennis, I've come for the golf. Oh. Long streak of... Yoo oh, hi. Oh. Hi. Now, I've got us all organised. Bill and Thomas are going to play golf, and Sally and I are going to play tennis. Then we'll all meet for lunch. All right, then. Well, have a nice time. Oh, What's your hand again, Thomas? Oh, uh, mainly. <laughs> Your dad was a bit of a bastard. Well, he was young. He was a carpenter. He used to go to funny countries and build replicas of British pubs. You kidding? <laughs> I never told him I was pregnant. And once he just never came back from some eastern place. Went on to Australia. I just sort of went into a panic. I couldn't look after a baby. So I put you in the phone box right next to the hospital. Then I rang them and told them you were there, and they picked you up in five minutes. It wasn't like that woman in the handbag. What woman? Don't tell me Lively never told you about Oscar Wilde. A great Irishman. Don't you start. <laughs> That's what you said, is it? Just yeah. straight down yeah, the thing there with nice your thumb. Good. Just um, keep your eye on the ball. Right. On. Seve, go for it, yeah, Sunbeam. Swing. That's it. Uh, how are you, Brenda? <laughs> God, I didn't think I'd see you here. Pippa's just gone out for some milk. Oh, yeah. Are you off out? What? Oh, no, I often dress like this. Uh, for going to the library, where they keep the books. 
Yeah, I've seen your books. Oh, I'm not just an eligible man about town, you know. No way, no, sir. <laughs> I have a wonderful brain, <laughs> which I keep in my head. Um, up here. God, this is hard work. Will you have a cup of tea? Quanto, quanto tempo se leva di caro, quanto tempo se leva di caro, posi... Bloody hell. Bloody, bloody laughing stock. My best salesman is as bent as a corkscrew and I didn't know. They'll crucify me. Oh dear. I'll murder him. And you must have noticed something was going on. Mr. Sheen, I'm deeply shocked. Will you call the police? Not yet. I'm going to find him first. Maybe I can get the money back before the auditors come up. And you've no idea where they went to on that bloody boat. Afraid not. What am I thinking of? The boat hirers. They would know. Listen, Maureen, not a word. This gets out and I'm finished. How could Bill do this to me? Mm, I can't think. Well, you haven't done anything to upset him, have you? Bye, Derek. The one. Right. Come on. Okay. If I get this right, it could be my first ever vulture. Here you go, Thomas. Just testing. Is that all right? Yeah, lovely. Right. <sighs> Sorry, it's... Thomas. What was it? Did that on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> Bill Rowland. Oh, hello, love. He what? He came to Linton. Oh, all right, well done, lass. Well, I think we'll just have to move everything forward, get packing, shut the house up, um, change the tickets for tonight, and I'll be with you as soon as I can. Yeah, keep calm, love. Bye. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got to go. It's a bit of a business problem. Oh. Lazy Days outfit. They're not here. Oh, you were at the piss piss-up. That's right. It's the Rollins I'm looking for. Where did they boat off to? Oh, I don't know that I could tell you that, sir. I mean, they're on a kind of a second honeymoon. I mean, two middle-aged lovebirds celebrating 20 years in the one loveness together. They need their privacy, their seclusion. They're in the Woodhall Hotel. I bless you, sir. What's time, Thomas? Ten to one. I'm just going to make a call. I'll be a minute. Yeah, all right. Suit yourself. Hello, sir. Hello. Oh, here, here. We've done some great golf. Really, sir? Yeah, I think I might join up. Really, sir? So you might be seeing a lot of me. Me and me mates, of course. Well, I'll see you around then, Lofty. Here he comes, Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Sorry to keep you, everybody. What was the problem? Just the office, dear. Nothing to worry about. But on our anniversary weekend, you still let them know where to find you. <laughs> I know what. Let's have a toast, eh? Yeah. 
The Queen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. To your marriage. Bill and Jane, the next 20 years. Yeah, rock on. The next, the next 20, 20 years. years. You must not have a lot in common, you two. I mean, you must have a lot of sort of shared interests. No. no. Oh. I would have thought they would have, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, you know, stick together for 20 years, I would have thought you'd had a lot of, you know, sort of, what's the name? Uh, shared interests. Yeah, I would have thought so. No, Bill likes his computer. Oh. Jane likes her physical workouts, don't you, dear? Are you trying to say something, Bill? No, no, you know me. I never tried to say anything, dear. Oh, good. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, the taxi is here, sir. Oh, thanks. I'll be right with you. What bloody taxi? I'm leaving you. <laughs> you didn't say you had to go anywhere. How long are you going to be? Forever. What? When I said I'm leaving you, I meant as in goodbye, dear. <laughs> Have you gone quite out of your mind? Just the opposite. I won't say it hasn't been fun, because it hasn't. I won't be needing the clubs anymore, Thomas. Do you want them? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Cheers. Goodbye, Jane. Bye, Sal. Bye. Bill? Bill? Linton, please, quickly. And he's done the company for a million quid. A million quid? <laughs> Crafty old Bill. Quid, eh? <laughs> Over three years, and I didn't spot it. And the bloody auditors are coming up on Tuesday. Oh, we might get it back by then. But he's buggered off, hasn't he? He can't be going far. I'm kidding. With a million quid, you go where you're bleeding like. I'll have to call the police. Oh, now, come on. There must be some other way. Look, this is very, very serious, and not just for him, but for Janie here. She's just an innocent bystander. I have some feeling for her. He's stolen a million pounds. Thank you very much, Derek. Look, Jane, I'm going to get strung up for this. Listen, if Bill fiddles the money back into the company, would that be OK? I don't know. If I can stall the auditors, maybe. Right, then we'd better find him and talk some sense into him. Come on. Oi, oi! What's all this we, Tonto? We. We split into two teams. Now, come on. Hurry up! All right. If he wants to leave his missus and Scott, but that's their problem. But don't get involved, it's not our business. Jane is my friend. Her husband has obviously gone raving mad. Of course it's our business. Now get in! The lending tears. Listen, I know about these things. Never get involved in a marriage, Barney. You end up copping it from every which way. Oh, do give it a rest, will you? And she's a demon at the darts. Because I taught her everything she knows. I thought you might have done. In a way, I look on her as the daughter I never had. That's very kind of you. No, oh, I'm a wonderful person. <laughs> Much loved and highly respected among the local community. I own my own bath, you know. Really? Oh, yeah. And I don't keep the coal in it. <laughs> I use it every Saturday, weather permitting. Mr. Lively, why are you telling me all this? Well, because I want you to know that... Well, I'm not a stinking bog Irish bum, the way some people around here affectionately refer to me. Well, what does it matter what I think of you? Well, I was thinking of young Pippa there. Now that you're back, the poor little thing has a mother at last. Yeah. But there's one thing she hasn't got. What's that? She hasn't got a father. I just 
can't believe it. Mild-mannered Bill Rowland, an embezzler. I mean, I could have believed it if it had been someone like you, but, but not Bill. Bill is always so nice. Do you know, I couldn't be more shocked if he'd run off with another woman. Uh-oh. What is it? Well, it's addressed to Jane. Well, open it. Yeah, but it's addressed to Jane. Come Look. on, it's an emergency. Right, OK. Anything you say, Governor. Come on, it's all right. Dear Jane, this might amuse you when I'm gone, Bill. Gordon Bennett. What's that? Oh, dear. No, I don't think you'd better see this. What? Oh, dear, oh, Lord. Listen, do you want to die where you're sitting? Oh. Did you just say you'd be shocked if he was involved with another woman? Oh, no. Well, this diary belongs to one Maureen Duffy. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything between them. No, 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 except, you see, on June the 20th, it says, Bill Rowlands says he wants to marry me. Then why was it sent to Jane, then? Maybe he can't stand her. Well, is there an address or something? Yeah. Blossom Cottage, Lin... Linton. That's what he said in the funny phone on the golf course. Oh, dear, oh, Laura, am I stupid or what? Come on, let's go. I'm beginning to enjoy this now. What, because some bimbo's involved? Absolutely, sure, Shayla or fan. <laughs> funny old game, innit? Oh! He had 37 different accounts and over 300 bogus customers. Bloody hell. What? The claims on these bogus accounts. How did he get them through the personal backup system? In English, Derek. Claims have to be verified on site, hands on, face to face, not by some computer. Another person has to visit the claimant. That's really fascinating, Derek. It means he must have had an accomplice. Someone who worked with him closely. And who worked on claims. Slut! All right, all right, take it easy, Sal. Got to stop them. What's got into you? Is it because you want to help your pal, eh? Or is it because you don't want to be proved wrong about the ideal couple? Oh, God, how deep you are. Yeah, I am deep as it happens. Yeah, well, please don't analyse me while I'm driving. No hands free to hit you. If you kill us, I'll be very pissed off. I thought you might need something a bit smart. Well, what about for when you go out? I don't go out. Haven't you got a boyfriend? Don't be soft. I'm not. Most girls your age. I've usually been worked over by some poxy bastard who can't wait to get down the pub and tell his mates about it afterwards. No thanks very much. That's a bit immature. You what? I think your attitudes are a bit one-sided. Well, what do you expect? I've only ever seen one side of life. The bum side. Foster parents, homes for the delinquents. The only reason I don't get into crime is because everyone expects me to. I don't. Oh, bugger off. Just where are you at, woman? You can't come waltzing back here after 20 years and start nicking me mates. And you can't buy me off with a few poxy coloured beads and a stupid bloody handbag. Sod your handbag. And you can't go walking round like the Virgin Mary, all kind and loving, when everyone knows you're just another daft old who's got herself knocked up. You hit me. You bloody hit me. Well, it's about time someone did. You've got a filthy tongue on you. I don't believe this. And I am not trying to buy your affection. I am just a mother trying to give her daughter something that she might need. What on earth do you mean, nicking your mates? Lively. Oh, God. Pick that bag up and come inside. I'll put the kettle on.
Lively. <laughs> I might have done some daft things in my time, but I'm not totally do lally. Well, I just heard him proposing to you. He was doing that for you. He what? He thinks you need a more stable family base. That was his way of trying to engineer it. Oh, bleeding hell. <laughs> That's what I thought. Thanks, but not in a million years. What are you going to do? I'm going to Australia. To see your dad. You kidding? Nope. He's kept in touch every Christmas. The last one he invited me out. Does he know about me? Not yet. You could tell him yourself. You what? Come with me. You just can't do this, Bill. I already have. Look, you can put us all back Excuse again. Excuse me. Derek says so. Oh, for goodness sake. Look, I don't want to be here in the first place. So don't, then. Go away. Look, listen, have you really thought this through? Look, this has been meticulously planned for the last two years. Oh, right. What are you doing? Not too clever. Try home wrecker. Bill, oh. Derek seemed a very reasonable sort of listen, man to me. Listen, have you thought about the moral aspects of all this? I'm sorry. Well, I've got two kiddies. Two grown boys who play second room for Barnsley. Well, they might still need their daddy. He's an awful lot younger than you are, I know, Bill. Isn't it wonderful. Well, how long is she going to stay with you? I've no idea, Sal. I worry about that when it happens. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy myself for the first time in 20 years. But what about Jane? Why didn't you think about her? Well, that's the easy bit, believe me, Sal. Oh, you bastard. What are you doing? Lending a helping hand. You're supposed to be stopping her, not helping her. Oh. Try the poor Jane angle. Go on. Bill! Yeah, uh, um, listen. This is going to break Jane's heart, you know that, don't uh, you? Jane Rowlands and Derek Sheen have been having an affair for ages. Jane and Derek? That's what set Bill off with his little fiddle. It appealed to his sense of fair play. And mine. Oh, and, uh... You can tell that friend of yours that I'm a fully qualified accountant, not some pumped-up blonde from the typing pool. Oh, I'm sure she never thought that in the first place. Then you don't know women. No, you're probably right. <laughs> All that working late, darling. God! It did work both ways, dear. Just drive the car, Derek. Forget it, Sal. My marriage has been like something out of the twilight zone. So now I'm buggering off to a new life with a new woman and a million quid in my pocket. See ya. Thomas! There's nothing we can do. There must be! Well, chuck yourself under the wheels. Oh, brilliant! Oh, me and my big mouth. Sally! Oh, don't move! Don't move! <laughs> Sally, this is not a good idea. It's the only way. Run her over. You'll go to jail. Bill! Let them go to jail. It's not our business. Oh, that's just typical of your whole selfish attitude, isn't Thomas, it? Thomas, we gotta go. Get her out the way. Run her over. Sally. No, I'm saying right here. Bill, come on, we'll miss a flight. Hold on, this should be interesting. Oh, God. Aha. Now you'll see some sense. Get out of oh. the way, you. Bastard. I'm gonna have you. Oh, yeah. Come on, then. This bit no. should be funny. You bloody come on, Come then. on. Yeah. Let's be having you, then. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Come on, you're all. Do you think you're running up with my husband? Why not? He's got nothing to stay <laughs> for. <laughs> for <laughs> Look, we know you two have been having a fair for bloody ages. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're going to look yes, a right so. dickhead, aren't you, Derek? Oh, yeah, let's be right. having you, eh? You are going to shit, aren't you? 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 You are going to shit, You want a bull and cow, I'll give you one. Now, what is up with you lot? Full moon, is it? Middle classes gone bananas, have they? Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. You're going to stop what you're doing and you're going to have a conversation like civilised people. You know, it shouldn't be hard. You've all got the goods on each other, haven't you? 
See, little Bill here, he's been naughty with the petty cash, haven't you, son? But you've all been playing doctors and nurses like there's no tomorrow. So it's all quits, innit? So what you do, you sit down, you have a nice little powwow without ruining the peace and tranquility of this lovely rural setting. Now, see, my little friend and me, we got a lovely life, thanks very much. Happy, uncomplicated. Not like you bunch of wackos. So we're gonna scarper before we get infected. Come on, you, in the car. Well, go on then, talk amongst yourselves, sort it out. Pretend you're grown up. I told you, never get involved in marriage barnies. For the first time in my life, I'm speechless. Oh, Christ for that. Oi, I say Tom! <laughs> I really miss you, Brenda. Thank you, Lively. Bit of mate on you. It could have been very handy around the yard. <laughs> That's off. I'm delighted. Yeah. Thanks. I'll be in touch real soon. Signed, Brenda. For turning up like. You can call me mum if you like. Don't be soft. Should have gone with her. Nah. It's her friggin' dream, not mine. She got out to us looking for the man of her dreams. He'll be 110, have a beer belly, and treat her like a bleeding crocodile. You're such a romantic child. Well, she's just a stranger. I don't feel much at all. It's not bad. No, it's honest. It's nice. People should be honest. Well, occasionally, not as a general rule. So they're going to be OK, then? Of course, I should think so, yeah. The police are now looking for four suspects who are believed to have fled the country with over a million pines. Get it sorted out. You still think we should leave them off our Christmas card list? Yeah, but it's interesting, though, isn't it? I mean, who'd have thought it? Bill and Jane. See? <clears throat> should never judge the other man's grasp by looking at his cover. Pardon? You heard. Coming. What? Come here, you. Yes. <sighs> Give us a kiss. We're all right, aren't we? No. Terrible. Come back here. Well, it's not going to be for me, is it? Well, I don't want to answer it. Well, it might be them from Rio. Yeah, and it might be the police. What are we going to do? We're out. There are more important things, Sal. What? What? 